This is Steven's sausage roll. Your goal is simple. Cook the sausages in each map without burning them or knocking them into the water. Now burning a sausage means to recook a side. So if a sausage segment touches the hot plate twice then it's considered burned. So the difficulty comes from the geometry of the maps. To analyze this I've re-implemented the game in OpenGL and we can see here the graphics are somewhat worse but we have the benefit of being able to explore the full state graph. So in this configuration we start at this purple node and we have to reach this green node. The actual trajectory that takes you there is given by this path here. We can actually see the correct solution played out directly. So in this case the complexity of this puzzle comes from the observation that you need to bring the second sausage around the back and then cook them both consecutively. Last part of the puzzle is that you must return to the initial position. So as we just saw the correct solution to this and the optimal solution is exactly as follows. As you can see, we've cooked both sausages, neither of them have fallen into the water, and we've returned to the starting location. Let's take another look at that puzzle. So here we've rendered all of the states that the puzzle can be in, except those that follow on from a lost state. So each of these red nodes indicates a state which we have lost the puzzle. So in this state, one of the sausages has fallen into the water, so the puzzle is not solvable. We can actually prune these states from the graph, and it becomes a little bit cleaner. So here we have only the states that I would consider redeemable. A redeemable state is one where you can still win. So maybe it's a suboptimal path. As you can see, many of these are suboptimal but you could actually return to a win state somehow by following some trajectory here. So in this case, for example, you've cooked one of the sausages, but you have one of them sitting in the spawn location, so you'd have to somehow maneuver the sausage back to a better position. So there are other ways to lay out the graph. This way of laying out the graph is not particularly useful for uh, observing the structure, so you generally want to use a physics-directed layout. So each of the edges is a spring, and each of the nodes acts as a magnet repelling other nodes. Now let's look at the state spaces in general. So in this case there's no sausage to cook. We can only stand in some location and face in some direction. So you could probably even guess what the state space will look like. You have a grid with various positions, but at each position you would have the four orientations, so you could be facing north, east, south, or west, and additionally the grid is connected in two different ways. You could either walk north, facing north, or you could walk north, south, facing south. So these give you two different types of edges connecting positions in the grid. Similarly, if you're facing east, we've rendered this with the east direction paths being the top edges, whereas the west directions are on the bottom edges. Now there's no voids in this graph, but you could modify the geometry of the map, for example adding a hole here. If there is a hole, then the graph looks slightly different. You now have a void where you cannot travel over the hole, so you'd have to travel around and then you'd have some orientation. Um, there's no obstruction to moving your fork over an edge like this, and similarly, in fact identically in this case, because there's no sausages to cook, if you had a grill you would have the same uh, obstruction to moving and the same lack of obstruction to turning a fork. Whereas if you have a wall segment, the game does not allow you to turn the fork through the hole. So the graph will have identical display in the case of the grill versus the hole, there's just a void, 
but in the case of the wall there's a lack of different orientations when standing against it. So for example here we could be facing north or west or south but we can't turn to face east so there's a missing node there and there's some slight differences there. In a setup like this one there's a sort of claustrophobic feeling because it looks like you could probably maneuver but there's not much maneuvering you can do. This is basically it. So if we look at the state space of this it's quite small. It's a line. It's linear. There's really nothing you can do. You can only travel from one end to the other. So you could be here, you could travel down, change orientation, change orientation, change orientation, and you can get into the corner. That's all you can do. We'll look at a second level from the actual game. We have infant's break. Two sausages, two elements. And the tricky part is that you have to first swap which side the sausages are on. So let's have a look at that. The correct solution, you would have to first move the left sausage onto the right to gain access to cooking this one on this side. Like such. In fact, you can see that there is essentially a unique solution to this puzzle. You have to factor through this node. Any attempt to solve it that does not factor through this node is not a solution. So you can see you do in fact have to bring this to the top which required you to do another thing that you must do which is reach this node here where you flipped it over as such. Now this does have the lost states included in it but you can clean it up very slightly by removing those so the graph is a little simpler and we can let the physics relay it out a little bit. Turn that on. So there's different ways you can lay it out um, I mean, you could lay it out like this. It's a bit harder to see, though. It does have some interesting appearance, though, with the mini puzzles rendering. So it looks like a very strange necklace.